on it. This is going to be another fun video. Feature length. So grab the popcorn, put it on the big screen, and let's get talking. First off, let's talk about I'll start off with this. We boss. gun guys can be such factory, babies. <laughs> we can. Such whiners. We obsess over the smallest of details. And if it's not just perfect, we go, eh, I don't like that gun. Combat handguns, tactical shotguns, precision rifles, AR-15s, Mini-14s, AK variant rifles, tactical carbines, you name it. We're picky. We're spoiled. We have the luxury of being spoiled. That's the whole point of this discussion. The luxury of being spoiled. Let me take you back, young people, to the 70s, 80s, 90s, when we didn't have the huge selection of GTW pistols we do now. We had a couple. Ones that I personally would have bet my life on. There weren't a ton of them. I had this issue of guns and weapons for law enforcement. I didn't look to see if I still have it. I might. It's very collectible. It's awesome. It wasn't a monthly magazine. It, that issue it was a special edition talking about GTW pistols. What was combat worthy back then i think it came out in like 1986 or so this gw le now one of the guns obviously was and is the star of the show right now the beretta 92 m9 series this by the way is an updated tabletop of this gun my first was posted on the m9 series in my own flying unit the 151st ARW, back in 2009. But I wasn't super happy with that review. I always intended to do an updated 92M9 review. And by the way, I will use that term interchangeably. And here we are, I'm doing it. But that issue of GWLE definitely mentioned this one because of its testing, its acceptance into the military. It had a good police record, and now it was amassing a military record definitely reliable definitely accurate definitely trustworthy yes it does have some downsides and i will get to those they're still there the other guns it talked about there are probably like eight of them in that issue and i i don't remember all of them but i do remember of course the glock 17 was there this is a gen 4 special edition color davidson special edition very cool gun uh, so I'm just putting some different colors on the table for visual interest. And you know how I feel about them Glocks, right? Well, that was going back to the 80s. I mean, and again, in that issue of GWLE, when I was, I was really just soaking everything in from the 80s, actually starting from the 70s as a child into teenagerism, <laughs> all the way to the 80s and 90s. I mean, I was just a sponge. I was soaking everything up. I was studying everything I could get my hands on, including like a, combat publications like Jane's soaking up all the information. A lot of that you still see being used, regurgitated here in my tabletops. I've been studying this stuff my whole life. In that issue also, and a launcher of the Nut and Fancy Project, the SIG-226. This is coded by ourself, Cerakote Patriot Brown. Super sick, super awesome gun. So, I don't remember. I think they were using the P226, but they also did mention at the time the popular P220, 45 ACP version, and the P225 single stack, also known as the P6, which I did an updated video on this summer. They covered the 1911. Of course, that's in 45 ACP. I forget which one they had. They had an H&K P7 M13, the squeeze cocker. Definitely reliable. I have shot that gun. No, I don't have one here on table. Cool gun, though. And, of course, the very much <laughs> respected and, I think, overhyped CZ-75. This is a Red Star version, which I reviewed back ooh, 2009, 10. Still in inventory. Still an awesome gun. But I did think the CZ-75 was way overhyped because everybody was acting like, it was the best, best pistol ever. Yeah, who who was like, I forget the dude's name. Is it a gun writer? Chuck Taylor or someone said the CZ-75 is the best handgun ever made. Uh, and if I'm getting the name wrong, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. 
And then after that, you know, Groupthink established on this gun. They're like, well, you know, they're, oh, and this also helps. There was a mystique about the CC-75 because it was hard to get. It was a communist gun. They only trickled in here. Never mind the fit and finish of those guns were crap, and they were, because I saw some. My friend had one. He said, oh, dude, I got a hold of a, you know, a com block CC-75, and I looked at it, and it looked like someone had made it in their garage. There were, there were machining marks everywhere. The fit and finish sucked. It was smooth, it was accurate, and it was reliable, though. But I did feel it was overrated. I mean, it was like raving about the hand grip. Oh, the CC-75 is perfect hand grip. It is good, but so is the Browning High Powers, which, by the way, was another one of those guns. What else was there? Uh, some really weird guns, like, uh, oh yeah, Smith & Wesson 3rd Gen 9mm's. And maybe another one, like Steyr GB, which turned out to be a crap gun. And uh, maybe a 10 millimeter, a, a, yeah, 1911, I think it was a 10 millimeter Delta Elite Colt. Uh, and some others, but I got a press. The point is, it wasn't like a thousand pages long listing all these different manufacturers. There are about eight guns. Of which that publication at the time said, hey, you know, weighing in with police agencies. And was it pure, you know, was there some money being passed on the table to get their gun in the magazine, as it often happens? I don't know. But I think mostly their list was correct. There were like eight guns. Now, did we obsess over all the little details back then? Mm, uh, kind of, but not to the level we do now, because again, we're spoiled. We have, you know, dozens and dozens of combat hand, uh, worthy handguns now that we can obsess over. Look under any video, gun video, mine, any form. You'll see guys doing that. You're like, yeah, I don't like it. You know, it doesn't have checkering on the front, front strap. The safety catch isn't just perfect. By the way, I'm talking about myself because I do that in tabletops. I have to. I dig, dig into the details. Yeah, I don't like vertical, you know, uh, serrations on the front strap. Oh, it's got a square trigger arm. That's not good. Sights aren't good. Yeah, the trigger only pulls two ounces too heavy and on and on we whine. Back then, and I'll actually go further back like to the 70s and 80s, what we really worried about was reliability. That's what we worried about. And I, had, I did a video back in 2008 talking about the advent of the reliable combat handgun. Go watch that. It's still out there. I'll put a card on it. I'm getting into a book and I'm talking about this very thing. It was pretty unusual back in the 70s to have a reliable handgun. In 9mm, like a Wonder 9 as we called it. I, brought, I shot the Model 59. That thing jammed all the time. Smith & Wesson. Then when Glock 17 came out. CZ-75 was available in limited quantities, M992 came out, the SIG P-Series came out, things changed. Now we had guns in that caliber with a large magazine capacity, which I, now I call standard, that were reliable, that you could bet your life on. And this was one of them, the M9. Now why do I start the video with that? Because I want to frame the discussion of what happened. And one, I want to laugh at how spoiled we are. Again, me included. We are. But also, how we've come so far from this gun's inception, and so we can frame the, you know, the discussion of the M9 series, 92 series, with that in mind. Because nowadays, stacked up against the competition, like a Walther PPQ long slide, you know, it's going to fall short in terms of SAWC. I mean, it is. Not in other ways, but in terms of lightness, weight, compactness. Yeah, this gun will fall short, but it's, an, it's a product of the 1980s. And actually, it was a product of earlier guns, like the M1951 and the Walther P, uh, P38. The 92 series has the same features of that gun. Those guns, the falling block, short recoil design of the P38, the M1951 inline barrel so it's not a creature of the late 2000s so that's the first thing the second thing i want to do when we discuss this gun is understand how this gun has changed at least for me it has so when i started tmp i didn't roll into m9 and 92 as a go to war option i didn't yeah i reviewed it but i wasn't like raving about it going oh dudes you got to get this gun and i caught a lot of heat for that back then 
guys were upset. They were like, hey, you know, the 92 M9 is the best handgun in the world. You're an idiot for not recommending it. Why do you always go blah, blah, blah about Glocks, blah, blah, blah about SIGs? And I caught a lot of flack. Used. Held my ground. I would have done it all over again, by the way. Because I was concentrated on first cool. That's why. I was concentrated on the lightest pistol. Still need accuracy, reliability, and all that other stuff. Track record. Both these guns have it. Way have it now. So does that one. But I wanted something light and more compact than the M9. That's why. But the funny thing I'm saying now is that this has changed. Now the M9 is being retired, replaced by the MHS winner of the SIG P320. This is getting a lot more second cool. Yeah, so now it's becoming more of a collectible status gun that we and us service members who served with this gun and quali qualified on it for decades, that's me, I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Air Force, and I competed on our pistol team. Guess which gun I shot? This one. This is, this is my old buddy. So now I have a lot of nostalgia for this gun, especially when I can get it for like 350 bucks. Thanks to Gunnies, because that's where I bought this one from, for about $350. Used police gun, hardly used. Just put in service for a little while, pulled from service, replaced with something else, no doubt. Then Gunnies bought it in a lot. You'll see his contact information below. And I was able to score it. So for $350, it's a no-brainer. To get a gun of this quality, durability, and accuracy, and for me, nostalgia, second cool, it's, it's a no-brainer. Absolutely. What we're going to talk about then is not every historical happening of the M92. That's boring. M9 series. If you want that, go to freaking Wikipedia, man. <laughs> you can look it up all you want. Uh, I'm not going to cover all that. I don't feel compelled to do it. It, it is boring. Uh, just rest assured, it's one of the most proven modern combat handguns that I know of. The M992 series. It really is. I mean, it served for decades in the U.S. military. I shot it, like I said, thousands of rounds in the U.S. military competitively and through qualification. I flew with it in combat support operations. Uh, I never doubted the M9 in terms of reliability. I doubted it in terms of that damn NATO 124 grain FMJ load. I hate that load. Yeah, it's hot, but it's still an FMJ. It's like an ice pick. And then I doubted it in terms of size, weight. It's just a big gun for a nine millimeter. Practice dropping that big gun. And, and I'm gonna start there. We're gonna cover and features first, first then we'll go into how it's shooting. Would, would I buy it? I've kind of already answered that last one, duh. I'm gonna put the CZ aside for a bit, Glock aside for a bit, and then the 226 just kind of balances out here for a little bit. Let's talk about that. Wait, it's, and again, this is kind of where my enthusiasm back in 2009 had to be. Because I didn't want to establish a channel where I was about second cool and, how should I say this, uh, hard to defend opinions. In, a, in other words, if I come to the table in 2009 and I say, hey, the M9-92 is the best handgun in the world. You guys are idiots not to buy it and use it as your primary go-to-war handgun. I, I think that would have been worthy of a lot of criticism that I could not have defended because... Uh, it's heavy. I mean, a normal M9 at the time, whether it's an A1, A3, or not the A3, but A1, about 34 ounces. Now, in the year 2000, I think the 92 series went through a slight weight loss program. So they put in a polymer spring guide. It's fluted. Polymer magazine follower. Polymer lanyard loop. This used to be metal. Uh, the floor plate became polymer. It used to be aluminum, I believe. They have a polymer-coated trigger. They should have a polymer-coated uh, left safety catch. This one is actually metallic. I don't know if the armor replaced it because this is a post-2000 uh, pistol here, but this one was metal. And then what else do they have? A uh, polymer-coated magazine release button. And I think all those things lost two ounces so two two ounces is better than nothing but still it's a it's a heavy gun 
Well, let's go to the 226 though, to be fair. The 226 has never been that light. It's about, what, 31 ounces? It's a chunky gun. The thing I liked over, I'm going back to 2009, start of TMP. The thing I liked the 226 over this gun is one, aesthetics. For me, I always liked the looks of the Browning BDA, which morphed into the Sig P series, specifically the Go to War Ready P226, right? I like the enclosed slide design, the Browning tilt barrel design. I like that. I like I could swap out my sights, which I have done on this one readily. I like that it was shorter in overall length. It is. Look at that. That's substantial. I mean, this is a full-size P226 versus a 92. That's what I liked. And it is lighter. Not by a lot, but it is lighter. And it held more rounds. Well, depending on which magazine you use. But even in 09, I could get mech R's with like 18 round capacity easy. Same with that one too, to be fair. But that's where I was. Okay, but now, nostalgia rolls in. <laughs> Not nostalgia. But back in the 70s and 80s, I'll say like the late 80s, uh, we, we, and I say we as a gun culture, were willing to take upon um, our carry system more weight because of what this gun provided us. And that, it's, that is its reliability. Which we'll visit again in How Did It Shoot. And I've put like 500 rounds through two 92s. Tactical Duel has one, and then I had this one. So we split the rounds between the two pistols, which, by the way, I've got to mention, the rounds were partially sponsored by, get this, Federal. Partially. Yes, we did get some boxes of ammunition through Gunnies, the Great American Gun Store, thank you, and Federal. So they kind of worked in conjunction. No, I didn't get case after case. I got some boxes. You know, enough where we could run 500 rounds through and go, yeah, well, let's, and I used 124 grains and the hollow point loads I used out of my own stash and some other loads. So it wasn't like fully sponsored. But anyways, they've earned this and I love federal ammo, always have. So thank you to them. Features, I'm going to go as quick as I can. And this is kind of funny too, just covering the features of such an old gun. Because I think most guys will know what uh, comprises a 92 and M9. That's true, but check this out. There's a lot of new shooters, and there's people that will have never or never will watch my original review, so I gotta cover them. I love the quality overall. I'll start there. The quality of all Beretta pistols is outstanding. It's always been that way. The Brunnington finish is basically epoxy over parkerization that's baked at high temperature, and dang, it is durable. Voice of experience alloy frame now that will wear and tear it'll i wish i had tds with me but he's got it right now his is polished even more than this and there's some that was in the lot that gunny's got i'll show you some video that were really worn they look so cool not so much in the slide area but more in the back strap where you could see the officer again these were used police guns they were just holding it i don't know if they're doing a traffic stop a felony thingamabob but they're holding it and so that will wear the hand grip even though it stays in the holster so the quality of the finish is excellent it has been upgraded over the years but i can't fault brunnington at all you throw it up against a i don't know a tenifer dlc coating I, it's not super high tech but dang does it work when this gun came out by the way man did they test this i mean You'll go to Beretta's site, and they still talk about the testing of the M992 series. Minus 40 to 140 Fahrenheit, saltwater tests, drops onto concrete, burying it in the sand, mud, snow tests. Uh, by the way, all that's been done to these other guns too. Glock, 226, uh, not too sure about the CZ75, but the result was MRBF of 35,000 rounds. So the military was impressed, impressed. It barely beat out that gun, the P226 series, in my understanding, just on basis of costs. So the M9 was more inexpensive. I'm dredging up some old history, but it kind of goes to the, the features review of quality. Cold hammer forged barrel, chrome lined, open slide design. Again, that guy kind of goes back to the M1951. No, I've never been really a, fa a fan of that 
more than anything aesthetically. Now Beretta will talk about, well, you'll never get a stovepipe jam in this because there's nothing for it to catch on. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And remember, this is an inline barrel travel with a falling block short recoil design of the gun. I get you, but it's just, I didn't really like the looks. I did like this though, however. I love seeing this gun in action in the Lethal Weapon series back when Mel Gibson used to be ultra cool. Man, did he sell a lot of these guns for Beretta. Remember when he's shooting at that helicopter? Man, I was thinking that was the coolest movie scene I've ever seen in my life. He knows he can't take down a helicopter with a 9mm, but he ain't giving up and he sure is trying. Then he's giving Danny Glover a bunch of heat over his choice of guns. He's, yeah, I know a lot of old timers that carry wheel guns. <laughs> that was pretty funny, dudes. Uh, yeah, the, the 92 back then uh, sold a lot just from that movie series. Uh, and I'm saying this because he made the gun more popular and I didn't hear a lot of guys complain about it. It was my own, own weirdness, right? Not there's anything functionally wrong with the open slide design. For instance, I talked about the sand test and this gun saw a lot of desert duty. The only desert malfunctions it really had was the contractor magazines. I think they were checkmate magazines with the phosphate coatings. And so those were causing problems in Iraq. And then they changed those and then the problems went away. And they did have some slide breakages, I think because they were running high pressure submachine gun ammo through it. And early, early versions of the M9 had some slide cracks and they put some modifications in there to prevent it. Right? Open slide though, I'm more, uh, I don't know, more open to it. You know, for, for what I'm using this gun for. Now the front uh, sight is pinned on this version. In later versions, uh, it's not. Okay, so if that's important to you, being able to take your front sight off, getting a used police gun like this, uh, might want to look uh, look elsewhere, right? If we talk about the M9A1 series, that came out in 2006. There were some changes on that. I'll go over them super quick. It had a one-slot pick rail. They put in a beveled magazine well, which this gun does not have. A little bit on the front, but definitely not here. They put on some back and front strap checkering. Ooh, I don't like, not this one, I'm talking about M9A1, but I make fun of us. Ooh, I don't like it. It's, it's you know, it's not 4,000 lines per inch. <laughs> that was the A1, and then in 2015, the A3 came out, and they finally put in a 17 round mag, because a normal M992 mag is 15, like this one. Uh, way too few of rounds for such a large handgun. And then the A3 added a three slot pick rail, earth tone, thinner wrap around grip. Uh, by the way, that's a great looking gun, by the way, the M9 A3. And Beretta still sells that. And then I did review that Wilson Combat uh, 92, I think a couple years back. Uh, there you go. That's just some of the improvements it made. Some of those have bled over to the 92 series. Again, you can go to Beretta's page and check it out. Features. I love the takedown of the M9. I just love it. It's so simple. But you just rotate this button, take the slide off, easy breezy. Put it back on. That being said, I also like the takedown of the 226. Also super easy. Glock 26 is pro uh, I'm sorry, the Glock 17 is probably my favorite. I don't care if I have to pull the trigger. It's not a big deal. I love it. Takedown, super excellent. No pick rail on this one, so sad. But for a second cool handgun, vintage handgun in my book, I don't care. I've always liked the trigger guard of the M992. Always have. Squared off uh, front face on it, super excellent. Recurved on the bottom. Kind of cut out here so you can get a high grip on the M992. And that takes it to the trigger. How about it's awesome? Well, awesome in terms of that historical context that I set. So against the competition, an unmodified 226, a Glock 17 unmodified, CZ 75 unmodified, I, I still would say it's awesome. Not the first round pull. I mean, the standard DA to SA transition on a 92M9 is a lot. I mean, that's a long, stiff pull. And in the military, we always carried it around with a round in the chamber, safety up, mag in. That's how we always carried it. Every service was a little bit different because it has all kinds of safeties in it. 
firing pin block, firing pin striker, your, the handgun will never go off. You could throw it on the concrete like this, safety off, and it's not going to go off. And then all you have to do is pull that long tri trigger, and then it'll transition to single action. And this is where the trigger is awesome, right here. Do I have my trigger skip? Because I didn't measure it previously. I do. Super awesome. So let's see what this pulls. I really couldn't tell you. I, I'm not even going to guess. We'll just do it on the, the trigger scale right here. This 92 FS police gun. 512. Let's do it again. That, by the way, is pretty decent for single action. You don't want your single action to be too light. Wow, that's pretty consistent. 5-1. Let's see what SIG is doing here. And I can't tell you how many rounds the SIGs had through it. I don't know. Because I could have told you, told you before it was coated. Because once it loses, it, it's coated. I can't tell each one from the other one. Dang, dang close. Look at that. So these two guns both have awesome single action triggers. And I've always raved about the P-Series trigger pull. That one pulled even better, 412. So maybe a little bit better. We could be here all night playing, you know, tick or tack, who's got the best trigger pull between these two guns. I call it awesome in single action. And that will bear out again when you see the shooting results. The magazine catch is reversible. Again, polymer coated in this version. Front uh, striations on the front strap. Would I like front strap triggering here? I go whining. <laughs> no, it's fine the way it is. I don't mind the grips. I don't mind the size of the grips either. But for female shooters, small stature dudes in the military, it was an issue. Another reason why the P320 was brought on. That wasn't the only reason. Just one of many that they said, we need to update our handgun system. And these plastic grips, man, do they last. Have I ever seen some busted ones? Uh, yeah, I have in the military. But the military, man, these guns get thrown in bins. We check them into safes. We land in England with our M9s and we have to go all the way over to command post, check them into the safe, check them out. That guy would like sometimes just put them in a bin, unload them, put them in a bin. I mean, they, they're treated like basically a hammer or a crescent wrench in the military. And that's with the Air Force. And the Marines and Army, it's probably even worse. Coast Guard ones had all kinds of saltwater exposure and yet, through it all, I didn't hear of a ton of complaints. Allen head screws holding them in. We looked at the magwell. The magazines, uh, the genuine Pietro Beretta magazines are awesome. And so are the Metgars. You can get 18 round flush fitting Metgars for the M992. It's been that way a long time. But 15 rounds was normal. Again, that's very diminished against the competition of the era, which was 17. Right, And then if you put a plus two base plate on that, back in the 80s even, which I did, even more. The favorite mag for this, like I said, is PB, so a, an OEM magazine or the Metgar. And then Airtronic had a huge military order and they delivered like, I don't know, two million magazines and I don't think they had any come back. Uh, it won't be hard to find magazines for your freaking Beretta though. And they're all excellent. Well, not all, but most of them are excellent. That's another big advantage to the gun, by the way. Cheap magazines, readily available. You can even find 20 rounders and beyond that. Lanyard loop down here. Same milling on the alloy frame. Nice beaver tail, but it's not obnoxious. Ring hammer right here. And then we get to the slide mount and safety, which I probably in the day criticize. And I'll stick with that. I'm not a big slide mount and safety guy because of this. I have to come high, change my grip, Versus a SIG 226. And I said that in a day. I've probably said that a dozen times in all my reviews. I just like the 226 better. But for a $350 handgun, I'll deal with it. <laughs> with this, with the capabilities this one has. Now, when I was shooting competitively with the M9, I just got used to the battery of arms. I was training with it, practicing with it. And I just, you know, think of it as second nature. Even now, when I started shooting the gun more, it was like... It all came back to me. It's like riding a bicycle. It's like, yeah, I can remember. I didn't have to practice at all. It was, it was literally super cool. Long slide release. Love the slide release, and I do use it all the time. And this, of course, this block, firing pin block, will rise and fall with the firing of the gun. Some guys had an issue with that in the day. This gun actually has night sights on it. 
I couldn't tell you the maker. Maybe Tridges. Say it right there. Yeah, they're Tridges, I think. Uh, with front, too. And then, of course, like I said, you, on the later ones, you can replace the front sight. Features. This side, uh, that's, I think, about it. I probably forgot some stuff. I'm looking at my list right here. Nope. The important stuff is there. Let's go over to the fun part. How did it shoot? Well, one reason I like that I got some Federal 124 grains is because I love shooting 124s out of a 9mm. That way, you can really check muzzle flip and recovery. You can. And so I shot a ton. I would say probably we did. Shot about 400 rounds of 124 grain, and then the rest was hollow point from various makers. And let me show you the accuracy of this gun, which I'll tell you right now is amazing. Inline barrel, doesn't tilt up like a browning design like this one, although the SIGs are very accurate. This is semi-rapid, I'll go quick if I can. Five yards, you'll be seeing the video some, through, some way through the video. Uh, 115 grain right there. That's not one. That's a different gun. Bretta 92, 10 yards standing. Dang, son. Look at that. One hole. That's at 10 yards. I got to be honest with you. I don't know if I can do that with a Glock. I, the Glock trigger I like. I won't say I totally love the Glock trigger. Even with a lighter connector, unless I put something like an Apex in it or if it's a custom Glock. Dude, I, that's amazing. That's 10 yards standing. And this was serial number 293. I can't remember if this it's this one because I haven't covered up or if it's doodles. Another great group, another great group, another great group. And then I, this one opened up, but this is 10 yards. I almost got them all in the orange and I said that's my fault because I slung around. Then we've got this one, 10 yards standing. We're seeing a re repetition. Uh, by the way, you notice for me, because I'm left eye dominant, I always shoot to the right if I don't connect, uh, correct my aim point or if I don't correct the rear sight, which you have to do with this one because you can't do it here. So I need to drift it to correct it. There, three shots. God, that's freaking amazing, man. I mean, I was just laughing. I really was. I was just like, God, this is fun. This Shooting this gun again just brought back so many memories. I love qualling with this thing, man, because... You know, I'd smoke the quals in the military. It's so fun. And the qual in the military, the Air Force one, wasn't a give me. I mean, actually, 25 yards, it was supported. And then you shot unsupported at 15. So that's some, you know, it's challenging. It's more suited to combat. Maybe a longer handgun shot versus whatever else you'd qual on. Like, a, I don't know, CCW, CCP. Good group, 10 yards. These are JHP loads. Cool. And then check this out. I'll end it here for the accuracy. Here's unsupported. I posted this video on Twitter uh, reuniting with an old friend. That's me standing at an indoor range 25 yards. Federal jacket at hollow point. Unsupported. So again, we see it shooting to the right because of my eye issues. But if I drift it, it's shooting right here. That's, I mean, this this is definitely center of mass. That's a great group for me at 25 yards with this freaking gun. So accuracy is superb. Follow-up shots, even with 124s, 147, super quick. Super quick follow-up shots. I mean, when I'm shooting it, I'm reminding myself, yep, heavy guns have a benefit. I've always said that in my tabletop, especially when I do a 1911 review. Heavy's good. Makes you follow up quicker it's funner to shoot your hands not sore this is a freaking heavy nine millimeter it is and uh, i'll tell you what man I, it's i don't want to carry this gun around anywhere i don't want to hike with it i don't want to integrate it into a sniper system but for the range dinking around home defense pistol in my truck all day long smooth trigger very little recoil it was a joy to shoot reuniting with my old friend which leads us to a question. I'm going to bring some of these other guns back on the table. Uh, which one do you enjoy shooting most? Nothing fancy. We're just talking recreation here, dudes. Gun TV, TMP. The M9, the 226. I'll just use these three. Or the Glock. Pistols. That's a hard question. If, in terms of enjoyability, where I am now, 
I would I would say these two are a draw. So between the 226 and the M992, I enjoy them equally, and this would be third. And the reason I'm saying that is because of the weight, right? The weight. That's why I'm saying it. Because when I get in position, weight is good. And ask any pistol competitor, competitor, I, uh, IDPA or whatever competition you want to do, and weight's good if it's allowed. For all the reasons I've said. And that will lead us to the end of the video, or close to it. Would I buy it? Value and options. Well, obviously the answer is yes for this price point. Uh, maybe the question would be, would I buy a, a 92 or a Brigadier with a 2 ounce heavier slide, a Centurion Elite Series, an M9 Series, A1, A3, the Wilson Combat version, the 92 A1, 96 A1 and 40 caliber at full price? versus what's available today that is a harder question because then I'm taking again more first cool and value into the equation you really need to ask yourself what do you intend to do with a gun if you want to just have a recreational gun a home defense gun where it's not going to be in a man portable system then I would actually have to say uh, yeah it'd be great especially like that the 92A1, what's that other one I, I mentioned? Uh, the one that has the, uh, the M9A3 updates on. And I'm rolling like their website video right now. It, that is a cool gun. It looks great. Yes, it will still be heavy. It will st still be big. But like you said, you didn't care because you're not carrying around. But if I go to a man portable combat system, WROL, BOK, where I'm carrying it, uh, my first choice on the table would be a Glock 17. Still, without apologies, I don't apologize for that at all. It's just as accurate, okay, close to being as accurate, uh, very combat proven, super reliable, but dude, this weighs like 26 and a half ounces versus 32, versus 31, 30.5. That's just where I'm at. But these used police guns that are coming out now, they're giving you an opportunity to own a piece of history. Like I said, it's this video is and this review is really about second cool, about remembering us service members that served with this gun. Uh, we probably, like me, had a love-hate relationship with it. The hate would be me carrying it. You know, whether it's in my cross-draw vest as I'm flying over enemy territory, which I did many, many hours. I was cursing this gun. I was like, damn, this thing's heavy. Why can't the military get us Glock 17s, Glock 19s? That's what I was saying. I may have even been known to smuggle <clears throat> a Glock 34 for that exact reason. Maybe, maybe. Can't be verified. Who knows? But uh, yeah, that, and it's big. It takes up a lot of room. But a lot of things that are big and heavy, guns, when you get them in position, uh, it serves to shoot them well. I mean, it's an easier gun to shoot. Uh, as far as quality, the barrel, the finish, fit and finish, durability, it's tops. Proven over decades. I mean, I cannot fault that. Uh, the other things I have with it are super minor, minor quibbles, like the frame mount and safety. I can totally deal with that. You can act like it doesn't even exist. So, like, if you shoot it at home, whatever you do, just never engage the safety. Rack around in. You know, the hammer will be back. Shoot should be like this to shoot until it's empty you can do it that way myself I like using it as a hammer drop device as it's designed to be just like a Walther PPK yeah but awesome gun M9 92 series for that matter 96 series highly recommended uh, I really enjoyed shooting this gun out in the desert shooting it on steel doing run and gun with the crew uh, it just reminded me of the good points of the, the series. It's a total win, especially at this price point. Thanks for watching. Gun TV, TMP. Thanks to the TMP Patreon guys for helping pay the bills here. Sure, appreciate it. You guys rock. Uh, TMP Patreon links are below, as is are the Gunnies links. Uh, thanks so much. And thanks to Federal for the boxes of ammo, too. See ya!